Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. If the best case scenario for a climate change is a rise of three meters, and the worst case scenario, this, this isn't forever. I mean, this is in the next 10 years. Worst case scenario is um, 10 meters, which is roughly 30 feet. Why is the UK government spending 22 billion or whatever it is to b build that nuclear reactor actually two feet below the waterline? And you're allegedly, I'm being sarcastic now, you're allegedly, purportedly, theoretically, ostensibly well read. <clears throat> Which I know you're not. You're illiterate pig fuckers. And even though you don't want to be like the pig fucker, you are a pig fucker. In the scheme of things in the world, as we know it today, you're pig fuckers. Even Sir Dustin is just barely, up, uh, he's just a senior pig fucker. Why? Now when I get, yes sir, in the back. I think sir, because they're preparing to, not for the war, but to defend if, if the war does come with the Russia and all of that. Yeah, but why are they spending 20, I mean, it's going to be useless. It's not going to work. Why? Why does Florida allow you to build this, this current day, when that'll all be gone? Or the third floor will be the first floor? Why does Al Gore, who is Mr. Climate Change, have his house? You can't see the water, but the water is in his front yard. There's a better picture of his house. And he alone, yes, sir. Because it's all horseshit, like you say. Why is Bill, and I've been saying bad information for a few years, his house is now 65,000 square feet. It used to be 55, but he just added 10,000 the last couple of years. I for somehow missed it. His house. Why is Obama, Barack Obama, house on the water? Nancy Pelosi's. Because it's a load of hot cock. That's why. No, Obama, I don't like him. I forget what we just allegedly found out about him. But he's not a moron. Why would he pay $43 million for that estate if it was going to be gone in his lifetime? We got a Hawaii guy here. He's an anomaly himself, probably, being in Hawaii, based on his background. But the, uh, although he tells me there's a bunch of Ruskies there. I, I was surprised. You know, maybe that's as far away from fucking Russia as they can get. <laughs> okay, why? I've been asked for be on three or four panels over the year, recent years, and whenever we get down to the you know within sixty or ninety days of the panel on uh, climate change, global warming, I get cut off the panel. I think only once did I send in my slides, but you believe it. That's what he said in 2008, uh, 13. Oh, no, in 2008, 9, uh, there won't be more, any more ice by 2013. There have been 11 groups that have visited the North and South Pole in the last 111 or 12 years, two, 11, uh, 11 groups. From Amundsen in uh, 1911, Onward. All 10 of the 11 groups are dead. Sally and I are the 11th. And we're still alive and kicking. Been to both poles, talked to the scientists in both poles. It's a fucking joke. You're just as misinformed about creating wealth, if not more misinformed. And this is pretty fucking, this is a lot of misinformation. 
when I was an intelligence officer in the United States Army for NATO, uh, I point there like, you know, for NATO, I mean, one of my specialities was misinformation. They have guys that are trained in misinformation. The Russians are really good at misinformation. But just as much as this is hot talk, your information on creating, well, they don't even talk about generational wealth, do they? You know, nothing wrong with Grant. Grant's got some good sales stuff, but 10x and that kind of stuff. Generational wealth, a, gen a generation is no normally considered between 18 and 25 years. Call it 20 years. So how much wealth can a family or a generation make? And that's what we do here in between 30 months and seven years. Seven years if you're clubfoots like most of you are in this room, uh, or uh, 30 months if you're stars like a few people have been. You've seen texts. Uh, you've heard about Anelli. Uh, because the system is built for an acquisition a month. One a month. Uh, but success leaves clues. You're easily led. When we talk about the film you saw last night about fear, um, you're afraid. Just like the guys that I've been a critic of crypto fuck since the beginning. Um, the, uh, I'm not as dogmatic as uh, Charlie the Munger. It's rat poison squared. Um, but you're easily swayed. You're easily led. Why? Because you want to be liked. Is that a man? I don't know. I don't think we have any it's in the group. Last seminar we had an it. So I said man, woman, or it. But I add it. I'm being sarcastic. It's not telling a lie because we have had it's here. Because you're easily led and you want to be part of the pack. And the inverse of that, when you get out there and the people start really hounding you and beating you, what are you, a fucking moron? I knew you were a moron, but now I know you're a moron. You're not trying to do this and you spend a lot of money and you're not talking to your this and you, you know, you, uh, and even though you may not see your kids, they're going to say you abandon your kids and it's going to go on and on and on and you're going to give in. Because you would rather be liked more than affected. Now, everybody on the planet, maybe not everybody on the planet, but almost everybody on the planet knows that that has the least of my challenges. And I said it when the seminar started a couple of days ago, if you like me, when you leave here, I did something fucking wrong. I mean, even my children. We were um, in China as a guest of the government for the uh, sovereign fund of Hunan province. And... Uh, the, uh, my youngest son, who was going to the University of Shanghai at the time, uh, and the two sons of uh, the representative of the government, and um, uh, the last name is Shen, but there's a lot of Shen, that's like Smith. Last name is Shen, and uh, they were all little guys. The father, the two sons, actually it was three sons, but the third son wasn't there, all are about five foot two, five foot three, and they all have the same initials, and they can all wear the same uh, tailored shirts uh, with the initials, uh, and uh, tailored suits because they're all the same size. All the three sons and, 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 and the guy. And so the, the guys in the back were talking. And it was a, uh, a, um, a, uh, a little guy uh, uh, limousine for, for, Ch for Chinese and Japanese, which are different sizes than big limousines. And I overheard uh, my son say, no, no, my, my dad doesn't love us. He doesn't expect us to love him, he couldn't say that in Chinese. He didn't know the symbols or the words to be able to explain that in Mandarin. So I heard that part of it. And so then the guys broke into English. And one of the kids uh, went to Berkeley. And one of the kids went to Stanford. And so they spoke good English, but they were practicing their Chinese or with um, Derek. And so then um, uh, Derek pounds on the little window and he says, Dad, Dad, um, you know, I'm trying to explain to him that you don't want us to love you and you don't love us. Well, no, that's not right. I love you, but I don't want you to love me. All I want you is about 20, 30 years after I'm dead, uh, assuming I did at a normal age, which I'd be dead by now, but the normal age, 
uh, I want you to have respected me as a man. And real con controversy, as they say here, uh, in the car, everybody going back and forth. So at dinner, the conversation broke out again. And uh, your kids maybe even love you, or you think they do. There's a question I ask you about that, isn't there? Some of you say your kids are too young, you don't know, or you, uh, do your kids think you're successful? Remember that question? And when you say yes, I think to myself, not consciously anymore, because I've read him so many times. I feel sorry for a guy, you know? Because you did something, something not right. Vis a vis creating generational wealth. Not being an old, fat, bald grandfather, or whatever. I mean, that, I don't, I don't, that, that's not my playbook. You did something wrong. And um, by serendipity, and for those of you that, Followed me, and many of you have. My mother, 1946, she was going through the um, checkout line at a Vons market, I think it was Vons. And you know, have the, they have point, uh, uh, place of point uh, where you buy gum and shit at the, at the counter when you're paying for the food. And there was a little Reader's Digest version, uh, summer of 1946, of uh, Mr. Spock's book on uh, rearing uh, children. And she picked it up. And the rest is history. That book is the second most purchased book in the history of the planet behind the Bible. And she raised me, according to that. Uh, and it's not, and, and that, it's not a tough love book. It's a middle-of-the-road book. And then that coupled with tough love, my dad, who invented in the 50s, that's um, how I was raised. But nowhere in the fucking book does it say the kids should love you. Nowhere. It talks about respect. In some of the Eastern Bloc countries, still respect is a big deal. You know, just as in the Middle East, they'll do anything before they'll lose face. Be embarrassed. So basically, the same wealthy families have been around 100 years, 150 years, since they discovered oil by accident, I might add, when they were looking for water in the Middle East. Uh, the average cost to get a barrel of oil, and this is the whole Middle East, from wherever they discover it, whether it's 5,000 feet or 200 feet, to the surface is $2.60. Some are less than a dollar because of the, wa the water. The oil is so close to the surface. And having been very close to that industry, in one of the royal families. And the numbers that they, uh, when I was asked in Bloomberg, uh, not surprisingly, I was asked about what I thought about OPEC. And I think I said that OPEC, and that's the governing body supposedly for the oil industry. I said OPEC um, has a lot of rules and regulations, but they have no teeth. Because if you break the rules, nothing happens. And everybody knows that they cheat. You're supposed to produce 1.4 million barrels a day, and they're doing two million barrels a day or more. Uh, and they, uh, they don't adhere to the uh, sanctions. And they have side deals. And, you know, sometimes they sell oil at $40 a barrel. They need cash. So OPEC has got no teeth. And I used to know Khashoggi, who was the head of OPEC 35 years ago. And he was the uncle of the guy that they chopped up in the Venezuelan or whatever fucking embassy uh, here a couple, three years ago. Um, and they chopped him up, literally. Chainsaw, lie and a shovel, um, because you you want to be part of the group. Now I wasn't in a fraternity in college; nobody wanted me. I've never been in any of those social organizations. I've been asked two or three times to be a mason, but nah. And these groups take advantage of you want to be liked. If you think, even remotely, that people are going to understand you when you get out there, you're a fucking moron. I'm saying sarcastically, your wife's probably already gone. And when I was young and 
more ruthless than I am today. I used to get a yuck out of it. When uh, lovebirds would come here, they'd be separated in six weeks. I still remember a couple walking down the drive holding hands. I still remember that. And when we were in Japan, everybody holds hands, not everybody, a lot of people hold hands in Japan, couples. So I was being a smart ass, and so I, I, I took it. I said, What's wrong with you? Are you dizzy? You need support? I've never held Sally's hand, other than that time. And uh, we were in Hiroshima, I think. But I've also never given her any candy or any of that shit. And that is shit to me. You know, I, say, I call everything shit, but that is shit to me. 